Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is while you're watching this. As you can see, I'm wearing my rose-tinted visor for the good old days of sunshine because in the UK, we're in the rainy season. It lasts from January to December and you get flooded roads. In the UK, our roads have camber on them so the rain will run off either side. Ignore these two bits in the middle, I'll get to those in a moment. And when you're in the countryside, the verge can be anything from 50 millimetres, two inches below the level of the road, to six inches above, depending on the, the road, how badly chopped up the verge is. And here's an example of how to use the verge. It's a road I ride at least twice a week. So I come up to where I know it floods after the heavy rain that we just had. And I'm using the verge on the left hand side of the road, which I know where it is in relation to the road surface itself, to judge the depth of the water and make my way so safely through. If you're in towns, you'll have a curbstone. These are approximately 120 mil tall from the surface of the road to the top of the curbstone. So these two small markings here, these are actually just to illustrate the position of where centre lines would be, such as solid white lines or dashed white lines. And you can use these or any road markings at either side of the road to help you judge the depth of the water you're about to go through. Or it might be time to turn round and not go through there. For contrast, here I am making my way through some very deep water. I can't see the edge of the kerb, uh, it's underwater, and I was actually looking at using the path to bypass this particular puddle, and instead I could see the white lines, so I've used those in the middle of the road to the highest part. You just have to be careful about oncoming vehicles such as this one. It, were, it did slow down for us, but um, it would have gone ploughing straight through that water, and I was on the wrong side of the road for safety. You may have noticed this vehicle in the distance at the start of the clip. I'd actually pulled over, uh, this vehicle was behind myself and Richard who was riding with me, and let it go through first because another thing to do is use other vehicles to judge the depth. Uh, it hadn't come up to the bottom of the car under tray, so I knew I was looking at only about two to three inches of water here in the middle of the road. The final thing to mention is speed. If you're travelling in a car and you hit water on one side of the car, you can feel the vehicle veer to the side because it's being slowed down. On a bike, that could be like running into a kerb. So you want to keep your speed down if you know you're going to be approaching deep water or if the conditions make it look like you're going to be getting some just around the next corner. But the other thing is, don't go too slowly. You need, if there's a pothole anywhere in this water, you need to be going quick enough to not have the bars twist either way if you catch the side of the pothole or go straight into it. Ideally you won't be hitting any potholes and you'll be looking in the water to see that there aren't any there. But if you do catch one you don't want the bars pulled out so you need to be going at least walking pace is how I ride through them. It's up to you if you feel safer going faster or slower and it is safe to do so then go whatever speed you're happy with but just be careful of either hitting a brick wall or having the bars pulled out from underneath you either way you're going to end up laying on your side in the water and that no matter how good your waterproofs are they will fill up at that point and it won't be pleasant riding home good news is that's enough blather from me for another video so see you in the next one and uh, stay upright stay safe and if you can stay dry and finally, although this is a ford rather than deep water, I had a quick look at it and I could see algae at the bottom. It was about 20-30 feet across and I decided that's not for me and performed a U-turn on my fully laden Gladius on a very narrow road. But uh, better that than falling off the bike in the water.